at St. James Episcopal Church in Manitowoc, Wisconsin. I'd like to welcome you this morning on the fourth Sunday after Pentecost, June 28th. saddled his donkey, 
and took two of his youngest men with him, and his son Isaac. He cut the wood for the burnt offering, and he set out and went to the place in the distance that God had shown him. On the third day, Abraham looked up and saw the place far away. And then Abraham said to his young men, Stay here with the donkey. The boy and I will go over there. We will worship, and then we will come back to you. Abraham took the wood of the burnt offering and laid it on his son Isaac, and he himself carried the fire and the knife. So the two of them walked together. Isaac said to his father, Abraham, Father, and he said, Here I am, my son. And he said, The fire and the wood are here, but where's the lamb for a burnt offering? And Abraham said, God himself will provide the lamb for a burnt offering, my son. So the two of them walked on together. When they came to the place that God had shown them, Abraham built an altar there and laid the wood in order. He bound his son Isaac and laid him on the altar on top of the wood. Then Abraham reached out his hand and took the knife to kill his son. But the angel of the Lord called to him from heaven and said, Abraham, Abraham, he said, here I am. He said, do not lay your hand on the boy or do anything to him. For now I know that you fear God, since you have not withheld your son, your only son, from me. And Abraham looked up and saw a ram caught in a thicket by its, horn, by its horns. Abraham went and took the ram and offered it as a burnt offering instead of his son. So Abraham called that place, the Lord will provide, as it is said to this day, on the mount of the Lord it shall be provided. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. Let us read together from Psalm 13. How long, O Lord, will you forget me forever? How long will you hide your face from me? How long shall I have perplexity in my mind? Breathe in my heart day after day. How long shall I have to be trying over me? Look upon me and answer me, O Lord my God. Give light to my eyes, lest I see them in death. Thus my enemies say, I have prevailed over this one, and my foes rejoice that I have fallen. But I put my trust in your mercy. My heart is joyful because of your saving power. I will sing to the Lord, who has dealt with me richly. I will praise the name of the Lord most high. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus said, Whoever welcomes you, welcomes me. And whoever welcomes me, welcomes the one who sent me. Whoever welcomes a prophet in the name of a prophet will receive a prophet's reward. And whoever welcomes a righteous person in the name of a righteous person will receive the reward of the righteous. And whoever gives even a cup of cold water to one of these little ones in the name of a disciple, truly I tell you, none of these will lose their reward. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. This morning, I want to talk a little bit about what we heard in the Gospel, but how that came to us through the story we heard in Genesis. I'm a parent and I'm a grandparent, and I hear parents and grandparents all the time when something befalls their child or their young child, and they say, oh my gosh, if that could just happen to me instead of my child. I feel so bad that it happened to my child. And as we heard the story of Abraham and his son, and we heard that God told Abraham that he needs to sacrifice his son, I thought, oh my goodness, how that must have weighed so heavily on Abraham. And there was a, a line that we read where he sees where he needs to go, and it is far off in the distance. And you know, I was thinking about that. When we know we have to do something, even if we know it's the right thing to do, but we just don't want to do it, 
we can just kind of ruminate on it like a cow with its cub. And you know, we, we think about it, we think about it, and here Abraham had a long way to think about it. And I don't know about you, but I do know about me. Sometimes when I'm on that journey to do something I don't want to do, but I know I have to do, and I see a side road, well, sometimes I take that side road. Maybe I go around the block and end up back on my journey, and then I see another side road, or I pull off to the side of the road and just have to think about it. And sometimes we turn left and never continue down that journey the one we were meant to do. But Abraham shows us that he stays the course. Even when he's questioned by his son, where is the sheep for the burnt offering? Abraham says, God will provide. He never loses his faith and he never loses his trust. And that's what we are called to do. And we hear that in the gospel. Jesus tells us, when you come to me, and you trust in me, trust in the one who sent me, meaning God. And we have lived through an awful lot in 2020 so far. We have lived through pandemics, still living through it. We have seen our country rise up in ways we have not seen our country rise to say, enough, all people must be treated equally. And one of the things that has caught my attention, seeing some of this in person, seeing a lot of it over the television, is the little children that are part of this. And I was thinking back to Isaac. He wasn't just a bystander. His father bound him and put him on the wood, ready to start a fire. And Isaac was there. And Isaac heard God, we think, speak to his father. And even if he didn't, he realized that Abraham had heard from God. And Abraham released him, and God provided the ram. Heavy teaching for a young man. And as our children have seen the things that have partaken of these last days, I hope good and heavy learning for them as well. And ultimately the lesson is, follow where God is leading, and all will be well, and all will be right. And I was pondering this in my own family. So uh, my birth family was just me and a sister, but I grew up in an area out west that was right next to the Blackfoot Reservation. So Native American. And there were biases between the whites in that area and the Native Americans. And then I moved to Wisconsin and got to know a lot of people here from the United Nation and realized, oh my gosh, some of those same biases. And then I've taken youth groups to different places with different people groups around the United States and in Mexico. And those same biases persist. And I always found this kind of interesting because in my own family, um, I had grandparents that came from Poland. And I can remember um, stories told of my Polish grandfather. Never met him. He died from some work-related illnesses before I, I was born. But he got a job when he came to the United States as a street sweeper. And not the kind we see today out on the road in the yard with this really big piece of equipment. He pushed a garbage can, and he had a room, and he scooped up the dirt. But this was better. This is his hope. This would be better for his family. And then the other side of my family uh, immigrated from Europe, from Sweden, and from other places. And they actually did the whole covered wagon thing, which got us out west. And then one of the things that I was blessed with was a father who let me go to all different kinds of churches, um, not only Christian, but other faith traditions, and kind of learn about them as I was uh, growing up. And then we also got to learn about different races 
and different peoples from all over the world. And so when we were raising our children, um, we had guests and friends from different cultures, different cultures and different countries. And one of the things I was thinking about, how could we right now, in this place and this time, help change our thinking and help change the thinking of our neighbors? One, go make friends with somebody who is not like you. Another thing I thought about was try to learn another language. Um, I have a friend who's from Denmark, and not Denmark, Wisconsin, which is just up the road here, but actually from the country of Denmark. And he married uh, a lady from Mexico. And that's actually where I met him. He uh, owned a business I worked with in Mexico. But he said it's a rule, a law, if you will, in Denmark, that if you're going to be there longer than a year, you need to enroll and learn the language. And um, I thought, you know, learning another language. So I learned Spanish when I was young and kept it up through college. Um, encouraged my children, my their father learned Spanish. Um, my oldest daughter did. I think others, my other kids know some of it. Um, and then I learned sign language, which is indeed a different language. Um, when I worked with a, a whole bunch of deaf people, it was good to learn about their language and learn their language and learn their culture. And doing that just changed me so that I could be more comfortable with them and it made them more comfortable with me. So there are a lot of simple, easy ways that we can help be like the other. And I think that takes us to the end of the gospel where Jesus points out it can be as simple as even giving somebody a cup of water. And I would imagine, I know I've challenged the congregation here at St. James a couple times over the years to go home and look into your closets and look into your drawers and your attics and your basements and maybe around your main living space. You probably have a lot of things you don't need. Ponder, why do you have them? What could you do with them? Who could be better off and get more utilization out of them than you? So maybe learning how to live with the other is first learning how to live with ourselves. Not sitting quietly when we see something that's wrong, but letting the other know that really wasn't appropriate. It's easier than you think. And I think if we listen to the words of Jesus and follow Jesus, God will be with us. And we may go through some trials and tribulations, just as Abraham did, but he followed God, and God provides. And God will provide for you as well. Amen. And now if you would join me as we say together the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father of the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally God of the Father, God for God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. 
we look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The prayers of the people. In peace we pray to you, Lord God, for all people in their daily life and work, for our families, friends, and neighbors, and for those who are alone, for this community, the nation, and the world, for, for all who work for justice, justice freedom, freedom, and peace, for the just and proper use of your creation, for the, for the victims, victims of hunger, fear, injustice, and oppression, for all who are in danger, <coughs> sorrow, or any kind of trouble, for those who minister to the sick, the friendless, and the needy, for the peace and unity of the Church of God, for all who proclaim the gospel, and all who seek the truth. For the entire body of Christ, near and far. For all who serve God and God's church. For the special needs and concerns of this congregation, hear us, Lord. For your mercy is great. We thank you, Lord, for all the blessings of this life. We exalt you, O God our King. And praise your name forever and ever. We pray for all who have died, that they may have a place in your eternal kingdom. Lord, let your loving kindness be upon them, who put, put their trust in you. We pray to you also for the forgiveness of our sins. Most, Most merciful God, we, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our own heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. May Almighty God have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. The peace of Christ be always with you. And also with you. The table of bread and wine is now to be made ready. It is a table of company with the earth and all with Jesus and all who love him. It is a table of sharing with the poor of the world with whom Jesus identified himself. It is the table of communion with the earth in which Christ became incarnate. So come to this table, you who have much faith, and you who would like to have more. You who have been here often, and you who have not been for a long time. You who have tried to follow Jesus, and you who have failed. Come.
offerings may be mailed to the church or sent through your bank. There are also online giving options on our website at mysjbc.com slash donate. Thank you for your financial support as we adapt our ministry and mission together these past few months. Inspire us to always share your love through action, O oh God. Strengthen us to always be an inviting, safe community for all. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord, our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. God of all power, ruler of the universe, you are worthy of glory and praise. Glory, glory to you forever and ever. At your command, all things came to be. The vast expanse of interstellar space, galaxies, suns, the planets and their courses, and this fragile earth, our island home. By your and will, they were created, created and have their being. From the primal elements, you brought forth the human race and blessed us with memory, reason, and skill. You made us the rulers of creation, but we turned against you and betrayed your trust and we turned against one another. Have mercy, Lord, for we are sinners in your sight. Again and again you called us to return. Through prophets and sages you revealed your righteous law, and in the fullness of time you sent your only Son, born of a woman, to fulfill your law, to open for us the way of freedom and peace. By, by his blood he reconciled us, by, by his wounds we are healed. And therefore we praise you, joining with the heavenly chorus, with prophets, apostles, and martyrs, and with all those in every generation who have looked to you in hope, to proclaim with them your glory in their unending hymn. Holy, 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 God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. And so, Father, we who have been redeemed by him and made a new people by water and the Spirit, now bring before you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be the body and blood of Jesus Christ, our Lord. On the night he was betrayed, he took bread. He said the blessing. He broke the bread. He gave it to his friends and said, Take and eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine. He gave thanks and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering now his word of redemption and offering to you the sacrifice of thanksgiving. We celebrate his death and resurrection as we await the day of his coming. Lord God of our fathers and mothers, God of Abraham and Sarah, of Isaac and Rebekah, of Jacob, Leah and Rachel, God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, open our eyes to see your hand at work in the world about us. Deliver us from the presumption of coming to this table for solace only and not for strength, for pardon only and not for removal. Let the grace of this holy communion make us one body, one spirit in Christ, that we may worthily serve the world in his name. Risen Lord, Lord, be known to us in the breaking of the bread. Accept these prayers and praises, Father, through Jesus Christ, our great high priest, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit, your church gives honor, glory, and worship from generation to generation. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, 
and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia! Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia. The gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you, and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. This morning, I will partake of the physical bread and wine, and I ask all of you to remember that no matter where you are, what your situation is, we may practice spiritual communion with God. And I ask that you do that now. Say a special prayer. Take some time for silence. Body of Christ, the bread and cup. The blood of Christ, the cup of salvation. Remembering all of this that as we are community dispersed, communion said with two or three who are gathered is better indeed, and we say and eat communion on behalf of the whole. And now let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. May the blessing of God, who creates, redeems, and sustains, be upon you and all you love and pray for, this day and forevermore. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen.
Thanks be to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.